Okay, so let's go for 5.2. We've got a compression member, 500 millimeters effective length. All right, so effective length, so that tells me I don't need to worry about the K. I'm taking, when I, when I see effective length, that means that uh, uh, KL equals that. That's effective length. Consists of uh, 25 millimeters diameter aluminium rod. In order to reduce the weight by the member by 25%, the solid rod is replaced by a hollow rod of cross-sectional air of cross-section shown. So we've got something like, that's originally 25 millimeters in diameter, and we've got Young's modulus for that. Determine the percentage reduction of the critical load. So the thing, I think, the first thing I'm going to look at is uh, the critical load formula. Where I've replaced KL with L effective squared. What we're what we're doing is is uh, we've got a solid column. And we're going to replace that with a uh, a one with a hollow. The diameter will stay the same. So the diameter is um, twenty five millimeters. For the hollow column. I've reduced the the weight by 25%. So therefore, what I could do is I could say that we've got the therefore the the cross-sectional area I want to reduce by 25%. So the area is going to relate directly to um, the volume. Therefore, the, uh, the total weight volume times density. So here we've got a volume of pi big D to squared and um, uh, what do I want to do uh, I thi I'm thinking what what I could do is I could say that um, I want the inner section that I'm going to cut out to be 25% of this A pi little d squared. So my inner section will be 25% worth of this. That will reduce my overall weight by 25%. Straightforward. So therefore I've got d equals square root of 0.25 big D. What's the square root of 0.25? That's 0.5 d. <coughs> okay, so my inner in a little d is 0.5 of big D. Makes sense, obviously, we want a smaller number. So the next thing we can do is we can say um, uh, how much is uh, what's going to change. So E is not changing, effective length is not changing, but I is changing. So if I find um, original I, that's the original one, say, and the new I, that will therefore tell me how much the critical load has reduced because everything else you can see is staying constant. So the original I is going to be based upon pi d to the power of 4 over 64 and the new I is going to be pi d to the power of 4 take away little d to the power of 4 over 64 so we can see that the pi's and the 64's are going to cancel and we end up with d to the 4 over d to the 4 little d to the 4 we know that little d to the f little d is 0.5 of d so in fact we don't even need to know what the diameter is so we've got d to the 4 and then that gives me d to the 4 take away replace the little d Four, that gives me what? So 0.5 to the power 4 
is 1 16th. So 1 16th d to the 4. So all those um, d to the 4's will cancel. We don't even need to bother substituting them into your calculator. And we end up with what? So you've got 1 divided by 1 take away 1 over 16th. Or 1 16th, sorry. Okay, so let's work out what that is. So we've got uh, 1.0667. So notice that your <coughs> your percentage is obviously going to be, so this is a, that's like 100% there. So therefore you've got here 6% and then maybe um, we want to give it a, bit, a few more decimal places. So 6.67% reduction okay or increase rather um, actually would it be increase or, re or reduction no it'd be reduction wouldn't it okay so that's uh, 5.2 so we're making the bar not so structurally secure and that's how much we reduced it by so I reduced the weight by 25% and I've reduced its structural integrity if you like by 6.7 percent so there is a good argument for doing a weight reduction structurally <coughs>